that is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die. So, in a Reddit AMA, James Wan, <laughs> he, he was either asked what would be his dream project, or just shared that with the, uh, the crowd. So, he mentioned that his absolute dream, uh, pet project that he would love to be able to adapt is the Call of Cthulhu. He stated that, not only, not only this, but he has been, uh, tinkering and conceptualizing this project for the last, uh, five years. Boy, um... Why, why is this such a train wreck that I have such a problem with? Let me count the ways. <sighs> James Wan. This guy has been rumored for one project revival after another, ranging from Resident Evil to Stephen King's Tommyknockers. And each time, I just, I cannot help but wince because it, 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 at this point needs to like really be addressed because frankly we are at the point and we've <laughs> we've long since been at the point where we need to acknowledge that the hype around James Wan has worn down and worn off because of the simple fact that he he wasn't all that other people were hyping him up to be um, I mean, he, he was, he absolutely was not the savior of, uh, the horror genre. As evidenced by the fact that you wouldn't get any, any journalist to admit ever that there was, that in the last 20 years that there has been any problem whatsoever with the horror genre. So explain something to me. Because in order for there to be a, a, a saving grace, there must, there must fall, first be a fall from grace. You'd be hard-pressed to get any kind of um, journalist, YouTuber, uh, podcaster, whatever, to admit that there was any kind of problem with uh, horror. So... That kind of puts the the reputation, the myth that surrounds James Wan into laser focus because, once again, how exactly is it that he is the savior of any damn thing when, according to uh, th these reputable sources, there's no problem to speak of when it comes to horror. Okay. That's problem number one. I'm not gonna say that this guy is completely vacant of talent. I'm not saying that. Uh, because there, the, the film that he was um, propagated to have saved uh, the horror genre with, uh, I'll get to in a second. Oh, God. Um... But, let's take it from the top with uh, one James Wan. Saw was frankly an overrated franchise. Um, it's... It's watchable, the first, and I would say the second one. But after that, it's like, dude... Um, it is, it's completely legitimate to bring into question this... Uh, this franchise when... After, like, look, they killed... Spoiler alert. They killed their monster, like, within the third film, and they're now up to, what, ten? They, they, they have failed, by and large, to keep the franchise going with any kind of excitement from its fan base to the point that they need to bring back characters that they killed six, seven movies ago. Think about that. Think about that other utter failure to innovate on the plot, create any kind of momentum for your series. And it's just, uh, I mean, and it, to this day, 
the Saw movies struggle for relevancy. Now, James Wan's career stalled and struggled after his first big and frankly exaggerated hit with releases like Dead Silence and Death Sentence. It was only revived um, after another equally puffed up film by the name of Insidious. I, I've never been a fan of those movies. I don't, I'm, I, the, the hype surrounding it completely evades me. I don't, I'm not impressed by these movies. I did a para boredom activity marathon a couple years back and they're just as stupid as I thought they would be. The paranormal activities and the, ins uh, the insidious movies. Um, now I can admit that the Conjuring was not only a great movie, it was the absolute best of the decade in which it premiered. I can acknowledge that for what it is. Every resultant film after that, not so much. And the fans know it. The studio certainly knows it. And that's why they keep going back to these movies. Uh, it... <laughs> and did James Wan direct all of them? No. But he did, he, you know, he did have his hands in them. He did produce, uh, many of the, the films. And, like, look, look at the state that those movies are in now. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it was, it, as much as the, the first Conjuring movie absolutely was a scary movie, absolutely was a classic, is absolutely deserving of all of its accolades. Guys, guys, the first uh, Conjuring came out a decade ago this year. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, so, since then, the franchises that he has started, right? Uh, and he's played a continuing role in these films. Let's not get that. Let's not forget that factoid. Let's not. Um, let's not forget for a second that he might. He may not have directed them. He may not have even written them. But. He still had involvement with them, with these continuing films. And your Saws, your Annabelles, your Conjurings have all taken a downward spiral. Pun very much intended. Um, and don't give me any lame scapegoat like he was, again, like he was only the producer in, in those duds. Because I get, because guess what? If those had, uh, if those had performed well and received critical acclaim, you sycophants would be gagging on this guy's knob and you know it. Furthermore, I hate to break it to you, but the way that this works is, if you're involved in the move in a movie, guess what? Whether it does well or it doesn't, that's part of your resume. I'm not doing this thing where you pick and choose what you want to acknowledge as anything that you have any involvement in. That's not how this works. Perfect, I haven't seen this gun in a minute. Um, so, that's where we find ourselves. Now, look. Look at this guy's recent output. The Mortal Kombat remake. Which, I mean, my god, it utterly wasted its R rating. Um, <laughs> Insidious Last Key, dear god. Do I even, do I even? Um, what a- Annabelle comes home, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. It's like, bruh. Please, stop. Please, stop. It, like, these, these franchises at this point need a mercy killing. They're just uncreative. There's, there's no excitement around them. We, we, it's just a gravy train that needs to continue for the sake of franchises. Nothing more. Um... And, you know, with, with The Nun and Curse of La Llorona 
He just repeated the same talking points to fans, gobbling up his every words. I've got an idea for the nun. I've got an idea for La Llorona. I, I would sit and watch uh, videos where he was claiming that. I would sit and read articles where he claimed to have some uh, nuance, some innovation for these films to, in order to justify their creation and continuation. And horror media being what it is, nobody called him out on his empty promises after those films failed to garner critical acclaim. I do not care that The Nun is the highest grossing of The Conjuring movies. That movie sucked and nobody wants to admit it. It, it was the Annabelle effect. You introduce a, uh, a monster. You introduce a monster in one of your uh, mainline Conjuring movies, and then when it gets its own sequel, it sucks. Like, bro, that happened in back-to-back -back Conjuring films. But again, you can't you can't expect the media to report on these things. All you'll ever hear about the Nun is, oh my God, highest-grossing Conjuring, blah blah blah. They'll never talk about what a piece of crap that movie was, how disappointing it was. And believe me, there will come a day where I absolutely go in on that movie. And you'll, no matter what your impression of that film is, you'll be even more surprised once I get my reviews. Once I hook my review into that film. It's, believe me, it's worse than you thought. But moving on. You know, it's like, dude... The, the, the pose, like, as far as this poser is concerned, what was your ideas for these films? Wishful thinking? I mean, damn, son. Uh, uh, people like him sit rather comfortably with the reassurance that he'll never get any blowback from reporters over his inability to... to deliver. It's like, come on, man. Nobody's putting these, uh the weight of these expectations on your shoulders, you're doing that! You know, he flops one project, well, it's on to the next one. Sequel can't reinvent the wheel? Eh, just make another one. It is, it, it's just a problem that he's yet another propped up master of horror who Promises the moon, yet we need to settle for for just less than. And why? Because he can't deliver. That's not our problem. Like, how? Th that's not how that works. And it's not up to fans to play damage control for somebody who is an alleged savior. Like, what kind of sense does that make? Wait a minute. So, um, it, 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 it boggles the mind and frankly baffles me that uh, he, he has been utterly exposed, especially in the last decade, but his get-out-of-jail-free get cards and free passes, to me anyway, have absolutely reached their expiration date. Um, I mean, and the, uh, the films that I mentioned, guys, these are just... Uh, what constitute his filmography? Ju uh, if if you look at his contributions to televised program, those ain't any better. Swamp Thing, Netflix's uh, Archive eighty one, Amazon's I know what you did last summer. Not only ha did you not hear about probably Archive eighty one, not only did you not know that there was a remake of. The, uh, I know what you did last summer, especially on Amazon. Uh, guess what? Now, you, you don't think it's odd that James Wan had affiliation with that? And it utterly tanked? Where are the journalists? Where are the podcasters talking about this? Because once again, had this been a, a, a rousing success, you wouldn't hear the end of people fellating him. 
So, when something is good, it's the best ever. Oh, James Wan, thank God we have him. What a savior, blah, blah, blah. So, when things are bad, he get, he, that just gets, you know, um, that just gets tucked away. It's as if it never happened. What a crock. And if you need to do that much damage control for one of your favorites, one of your golden boys, uh, how good is he really? You know, I, I feel the need that to ask that type of question. Uh, and you know why? Because not only do I have standards, but it's not exactly like anybody else is going to be asking those burning questions. And again, all those shows that I just mentioned, Swamp Thing, Archive 81, I Know What You Did Last Summer, all of, all three canceled after one season. Ouch. This is your horror savior? Seems to me that he's got the media, uh, or excuse me, the Midas touch on opposite day. All these were memory hold within a three-year period. I mean, Jesus, it's, it, it's, it blows my mind that all this just completely goes by the wayside and nobody, nobody talks about it. Um, and this guy, as I said, this guy is absolutely in active competition with Jordan Peele over who is more overhyped, who gets programs canceled, and whose projects just utterly flop. I mentioned this in my 2021 uh, horror year, 2021 horror year in review. And now, now that his sequels to his overvalued films have reached diminishing returns, and you can't even, you cannot even deny that. Now that we're at this point with this guy, whenever this fraud bothers to create new IPs, we get dumpster fires like Malignant and Megan. Hey, whatever happened to that Lights Out sequel? You know, I'm just asking since it's been seven years. Yeah, I bet you forgot about that one too. I bet the media didn't do any, any attempt to ask him that. I guess the movie that movie wasn't as good as people tried to make it out to be. Oh crap. Uh I mean, holy god, when word of a sequel was mentioned about Lights Out the genre who, the genre media, who are overly eager for a hashtag and a headline, were once again w ready to rechristen this pretender to the throne as the heir apparent to the crown of the genre. I will never forget bastions of journalistic integrity, like your bloody disgustings of the world, were shouting from the mountaintop how like him or hate him, you can't deny James Wan's genius. He's now made five major franchises. Yeah. Saw was a glorified torture porn expose. Um, The Conjuring? And, and, and. Insidious is a force of a franchise. The Conjuring is eight films deep ain't been good since movie number one and that lights out series never materialized what a legacy seriously this 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 is the this is the hero this is the champion i mean my god people like seriously get some semblance of standards i beg of you And just wait until we see the spin that is is headed or waiting for films like The Nun 2, Saw X, Salem's Lot, and Megan 2, when they all fail to perform. Now, on to the news about James Wan's handling of Lovecraft. Another project he's got in common with fellow choke artist Jordan Peele, who's fresh off his Lovecraft country, quietly getting kicked to the curb, not to mention his Twilight Zone cash grab. Gee, <clears throat> if I had a nickel for every unqualified pre-Madonna 
who wanted to throw their unmerited name in the hat for Lovecraft adaptation. God. I mean, look, we dodged a bullet with Guillermo del Toro's no talent ass never getting his chance to soil at the Mountains of Madness. Hell, we dodged a bullet because, frankly, <clears throat> I mean, this incompetent lummox failing to foul the Silent Hill series with his brand of monotony? Death Stranding anyone? Yeah, remember that, Opus? I mean, it's like, guys, you, you have to. It is imperative that we as a fan base pay attention to these trends. <clears throat> because not doing so can absolutely adversely affect the franchise. Continuing on, but that's a rant for another day. Guillermo del Toro can't even handle horror in general, as evidenced by a subpar career, never crafting a single horror icon, not a single scary cinematic experience that you can name like a Candyman, like The Descent, like an Evil Dead Rise. What in the hell was he gonna do with the Lovecraft mythos other than provide a wasted opportunity and provide exhibit number umpteenth that the only thing more inflated than this guy's reputation is his ever-expanding waistline. Anyway, whatever talent James Wan had for the genre, I'm sorry to say has since extinguished. Like, we just gotta face facts at this point. Uh, you had a cute little run, and you even reached the high bar once, but only once. Um, you don't deserve the right to suck for damn near two decades, persist off of questionable hype, and then, and then, for no rhyme or reason, you get a reward for that? Why? Seriously, why? This is, as far as I'm concerned, there's utterly zero confidence that he can handle something like a Lovecraft. And you know, if, if, by some miracle, he were to do an even decent job of it, not only would the media hype it up like there's no tomorrow, oh my god, finally, somebody did it right, somebody did Lovecraft right, not only would you get that noise, but... They would be demanding that, oh, this guy, he should do, he should handle a Lovecraft cinematic universe. Please, more, because that's what the horror genre needs, right? More fads. Ugh, but, I mean, it, it just, it doesn't work that way, it shouldn't work that way. And, if these hard facts bother you, you're fine, you're, you're, you're really fine with filmmakers failing upwards. Well, if that's the case, then you deserve the crappy genre that you get, and... Fact of the matter is, <clears throat> you, you, no doubt, absolutely, no question, you will be the first to step front, front line, front and center to play damage control when your golden boy, who's been settling for bronze trophies as of late, ultimately hits his career low milestone. Eh, but who am I kidding? People exaggerate the living hell out of Lovecraft movies any damn way. I mean, I, I consistently and constantly hear word of um, top 10s, top 10 greatest Cthulhu Mythos movies of all time. Uh, really? As if such a thing even exists. Like, bro, you have to understand, movies like Annihilation and The Void, those are Lovecraft-inspired movies. They're not great movies. Like... It, 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 it really, it, it personally embarrasses me as a horror fan, and it just, it doesn't, it's not a good look for the genre to prop up artificially and hype up movies that quite frankly don't live up, they're not, they don't measure up, they're not up to snuff. You do no favors to the genre by claiming any type of greatness when it's really just mediocrity. It, it just, it doesn't work that way. And it, it never will. It never will, it never should. Um, but 
it, like, if a film was automatically great just because it existed, then Eli Roth would still have some semblance of a directing career. Uh, and we've never seen a great, iconic Lovecraft film, and please believe, that right there is the high bar. Anything less, it, it doesn't belong in the top ten list. I like Richard Stanley's Color Out of Space. It's, it's the first solid Lovecraft film, but great, we've yet to see great. Um, and, you know... You knock, you knock the pitch out of the park to hit a home run. You do not settle for first base and then bunt your way there. Expect better from your filmmakers, horror fans. Demand more from your movies. Rant over. If you're resigned to your fate, time to subscribe to your fears.